Rach and I had an unbelievable Portugal-Spain trip planned for the spring of 2020, and it was going to kick off in Lisbon. And just like so many others, our trip was canceled due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Lisbon has been on our bucket list now for a long, long time. Finally, after more than three years, we have arrived, this time with our 11-month-old Vivi, and we couldn't be more excited. Okay, so we gotta go to Pingo Dose to get some groceries. Pingo Dose is a popular Portuguese grocery chain and a short five minute walk from our hotel. We needed to get diapers, formula, and snacks for Vivi. It's a really nice home own place. Definitely gonna check that out right here. Now, is this Portuguese or Spanish? Spanish and Portuguese. Both? Yeah. The company is in Spanish, but uh, the best process from the world, the hand is in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not that far from Portugal, right? It's yeah, in that it's southwest. Uh, Portu it's Iberian pig. Yeah. Iberian, Portugal, and Spain. Yeah. See, in the United States, you, you, can't, you can't get this in the United yeah. States for this price. Really expensive. Okay, so we made it down to Bayher. I, to be honest, I did not look this place up before we came. It just happened to be right next door to Villa Baja Luxury Apartments here. And they specialize in cutting up Hamon Iberico. And after all, we are on the Iber Iberian Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So it's, I guess, a little bit more Spanish. But man, did it look good. And this is going to be our first experience here with the food in Lisbon. And I cannot wait. We got some, I don't want to say some cheap bottles of wine, but it was kind of cheap bottles of wine at the uh, Pingo Dos grocery store. Uh, they weren't the cheapest ones, I didn't want to do that, but I think one was nine US dollars, the other one was 14. So back home that would be pretty cheap and we'll see if they're any good. They're from Duero. Okay, so I picked up this Papa Figos Duero Vino Tinto 2021 red wine from Duero and we're not going to Duero, believe it or not, on this trip. So doesn't mean you can't taste the wines here. I know I've seen this one in a magazine for like a good deal, I think. Maybe Wine Spectator. But we're going to give it a shot. Also got some local potato chips. And of course, our Hamon sandwiches. Some cheese. Got a local, local cheese here. Can't wait to try it out. So this is like really cool because Rachel and I were just saying, it feels like we live here as locals, like in an apartment, overlooking the street and going and to the grocery store. And this is the kind of Europe that's always nice to have too, instead of just going out for dinners and staying at, you know, yeah. super fancy hotels and all that. So really cool experience here for the first night in Lisbon, Portugal. I'll tell you what, I don't know exactly what these are because I got it in a pinch, but there's one that's like a sandwich and one that's like a longer sub. The, the sandwich is one is. Really I don't know, but the bread is like really mm. light and crunchy. Oh, yeah. Mmm. I like it. It's like a good any time of the day kind of 
sandwich. Yeah. You, like it could be a snack or give me a meal. Breakfast, uh -huh. lunch, dinner. This was perfect for tonight because we got here rather late off of two flights from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Vivi was going ballistic. We just had to get here, settle in. We had no time to go out and grab dinner tonight the, the way that things were going. So this was like a godsend being right next door <laughs> to literally, you walk out of the hotel, turn right, and it's right there. So incredible. Yeah. Let me try, actually, let me try the sub. I know, I'm liking this one so much. Mm. good too. During our time here in Lisbon, we are staying here at the Villa Baja Luxury Apartments. We'll do a separate short video on the property because we think it's a great place to stay, especially when you're focusing on location. Good morning from Lisbon. I am here. Finally, I'm up early. Vivi's still sleeping and she'll be getting ready for breakfast here, which Rach is gonna take care of. So I'm gonna come out and explore a little bit. And right outside of our hotel, we have a perfect location right here by the amazing elevator that dates back to, I believe the late 1800s and kind of right in between the castle standing up there so really cool made my way down to the Praco do Comercio. One thing you gotta understand about this trip, here in Lisbon, this whole time, I do not speak Portuguese, nor can I pronounce a lot of the things, so don't judge me. Now go ahead and kill me in the comments if you want, but this is absolutely amazing. It's totally worth getting up early in the morning to come and check out before all the crowds. I mean, it's just beautiful. Really looking forward to the next few days here in Lisbon and got some cool content I want to show you guys and share with you. I think there's a lot to learn here, a lot to see. And you know, where we're staying is really nice. It's perfect for what we want right now. We'll do a video on that. And also the food scene here, just like anywhere we go, it's gonna be incredible. And then not to mention just the city itself. This hotel was owned by Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, that Cristiano Ronaldo. We were supposed to stay here back in 2020. It has mixed reviews. It's a great location, but we heard the rooms are small. This is the first time I've ever done this. I printed out a map of the city that we're going to, in this case Lisbon, and marked down all these places that I want to go. Everything in blue is some sort of food place. Everything that's highlighted is, you know, a famous museum or attraction or castle or something. So there's no way we're going to be able to hit them all, but it's at least a plan and kind of lets me you know, uh, plan out the day, so to speak. It's gonna be a beautiful day. 
Heading out to see Lisbon today, Viv. So, gonna get our first pasta donata, right? Yes, I'm excited. All right, so this is the first place we're going. Mantegaria, again, don't know how to pronounce it. Really famous spot. First thing we're doing, right? You want rice? You didn't get the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. No. Good? Mm. Really good. Excellent. Just how I thought it would taste. Uh-huh. Mm. Really thin, crispy outside, flaky. Got custard though. It's, you can't replicate that in the States. No. Unfortunately for Vivi, her egg allergy will not allow her to partake in the pastel donata. But no worries. Mom and dad have brought her some food, so all is good. <laughs> First impressions, Rach? Oh, it's awesome. I, yeah. yeah. What you expected? I, it is, but like you never really know until you get somewhere what it's right. what it's going to be like. But right. yes, we watch so many videos, but you just you yeah. can't experience it unless you're here. Yep. And we're just starting, so. Yep. And to kick things off, why don't we get a 360 degree view on top of the arch? This is about, I think 79 steps to come up here along with the elevator but and a lot of construction going on in Lisbon just imagine the year is 1755 and an estimated 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake strikes the city of Lisbon buildings collapse fires rage and tsunamis strike the waterways Sounds like something biblical, but that actually happened here on November 1st of 1755. Neoclassical architecture then made its presence here in the city, and it sure is beautiful. Let's just hope the, the same thing doesn't happen here this weekend, 2023. Would recommend that the Lisbon the Lisbon card the Lisboa card gets you free access. Otherwise, it's three fifty euro, four bucks. Still pay the four bucks. I'd, I'd say that's worth it. That really, is worth four it. bucks. Four dollars. Yeah. It's the main square. That's where I went this morning. Yep. So, Rach, you're excited about these kiosks. Is it open though yet? I think so. Looks like it. These yeah. kiosks sell what? Coffee, beer, wine. Yeah. It's just like just, kind of so this kiosk is. They service. They, yeah. You actually are weighted on here, but just gorgeous views. You can see the bridge, the statue of Christ. So we have right here, Super Bar. So there's two beers here that are widely popular. And it's Super Bar and Saw Grace. Yeah. We have not tried either. Rich, the honors. That's a refreshing it beer. Yes, it's very good. All right, some super bot. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's just yeah, it's nice. just a really good European yeah. like Simple pilsner beer. lager. 
Um, this is on tap, so it's probably even better than in the bottle. de bacalao. Now they make bacalao over 300 different ways here they claim. It's a fish that's not from here. I think it's Scandinavian. Cod. Salted cod. Salted okay. cod from Scandinavia. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go try one. Casa Portuguesa do Pastel de Bacalao has about a half dozen locations across the city of Lisbon. The thing to do here is to get the codfish cake and glass of white port on a souvenir board. It looks just like this. And the best part is, it's yours to keep everything, even the pork glass. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's like a big egg thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna try it. Here, you oh. want to try it? Here, will you try it first? Yeah. Get some fish? Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, it tastes like fish, though. <laughs> it's taken. <laughs> Good savory snack. Mm. You can definitely taste the fish in there. Yeah. That is good. Excellent with the pork. Okay, so that's not a bad deal at all. You actually get to keep the glass for the white pork, and you get to keep the little serving tray thing, which is a nice little souvenir. And all in all, it was 12, this, it was 12. Yes, you can take your glass at home with the, yeah, I mean, with the tray and pretend we're still in Portugal. We're yeah, 12, yeah. 12 50 for that, euros. Yeah, that we should have like had. It's like 14 bucks. Yeah. Not bad. You'd pay $14 just, just for, for that line. at home. So this is the timeout market. Which we have been to the one in Brooklyn. Yeah, Dumbo Brooklyn has one. And I don't even want to say there's another 10 of them around the world, maybe. This is the original. And I heard it's pretty cool. I don't know if we're going to eat or drink anything in there. I think we're just going to go look because we got a lot of eating and drinking to do today. But if we see something, yeah. never know. Definitely cool in here. So I guess they take a lot of the famous restaurants and mm -hmm. food places here and combine them all into one place. So you have the place that we just had the, the tart, the custard, yeah, mentigeria. <laughs> Can't pronounce it. And then a bunch of other stuff. Really interesting place. Oh, yeah. Now the prices in there, I know I've heard, are more than typically like than what you would normally pay at some of these establishments throughout town but still it's a it's a very convenient way to go and just try a lot of things here oh farmers market oh it's called a traditional market see oh avocado traditional ah let's go see it. no this is where i'd be coming yeah, if i lived like, here i feel like i like the time out market but yeah Right. That big of a deal. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go try to find Pink Street, which is like a very Instagrammable type place here in Lisbon with some cool displays and I don't know, see what it's about. So this is really your more traditional kiosk here in the square and wow, it's really nice. Look at that.
the rigs. Look at this new bag. I like it. And we got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, all kinds of cool souvenirs. Like, we're not huge souvenir people, but... They're all kind of, like, authentic, very cool. authentic looking. Yeah, one for the Christmas tree, yeah. a little spoon ladle, and then what else? Oh, a little, like, serving um, thing. Yeah, and little... Um, Christ statue yeah. for like 25 euros, all that with the yeah. bag. Yeah. It's a good deal, wasn't it, Viv? Yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely a good place to get souvenirs because the Christmas ornament was like four euros. Typically, we're used to paying like 15, almost 20 dollars for Christmas ornaments when we go to different places. Look at this square. We are going to our first restaurant here in Lisbon, and it's a medieval restaurant. And I've heard a lot about this place. I've seen it in a couple videos. It just looks really neat. I think it's a place you gotta go if you're here, but they're famous for their chorizo, which is definitely something we're gonna order. And I can't wait, we'll see you there. Oh yeah, we're here. This is it. Yes, it is. Oh yeah. Go ahead in. Trovadores serves typical, traditional Portuguese food in a sleek medieval style. The illustrated menus really add a lot of character. Okay, so we ordered the chorizo. Mm -hmm. Comes with a little bit of bread. We're gonna try the sagres beer. A little bit ago we had the super bock. Now we're gonna try a sagres on tap. Mm -hmm. Do a little comparison. And then we got Vivi some french fries. It'll be your first time ever eating french fries. And it'll be in Portugal in a underground medieval tavern pretty cool and your white wine comes in like a mead glass yeah cheers like medieval times it's good wine so can't see the color of the sagres but it's in there serious What it's eat. definitely a little bit different than the Super Bock. This place is like what they probably ate in their, like the Discovery era, like the food. Oh yeah. Area. Yeah, imagine being an explorer from yeah. Portugal. You'd come into places like this when you, after a long journey of discovering new land. Very cool spot this is. I haven't tasted the food yet, but I know when we do our rankings, the atmosphere, up the scales. Wow, so this is cooking right at our table. Make sure you turn at some point. Uh, yeah, I gotta get this out of here so it don't get too hot. No, I'm the griller here. Huh? Yeah, so you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get your chair. How cool is that? I mean, there's like wood everywhere in here. I, <laughs> I can't imagine this being a, a good thing with the fire marshal back home. <laughs> Phenomenal. This thing is legit. This flame is like no joke. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, <laughs> there's sparks flying over my head and everything. Look at that. My God. Okay, it's starting to shrivel. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it off here. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so now the real question is, is it any good? <laughs> good presentation. Looks amazing. 
Let's give it a taste. That is really unique. It's not like a hot dog. It's not like it's a chorizo hot dog. Really good. Backs up the presentation for sure. First French fry. Does she like it? Mm -hmm. She's digging it, huh? Another thing worth mentioning here: the French fries. Very good. Those are really good fries. Oh yeah, they're dipping. <laughs> uh, we just ordered them for her, and like Rachel and I are like just crushing them. Mm -hmm. They complement the the tree yeah. that well. Oh yeah. Well, holy cow, that place lived up to the hype. That was a very enjoyable little snack lunch yeah. there. That was really cool. Okay, scores. Yeah. Scores, that's a restaurant. Uh, let's see, food. We'll go eight and a half. I thought, I thought it was good. Yeah, Bob well, Average. For what it was. Bob Average. Yeah. Service, seven and a half. Maybe not really. Yeah, it's hard to judge here because it's different. I know what it is, yeah. Okay, it's different. Idea, it's different here. Um, but the atmosphere, Nine. boy, I bet at night, I nine and a winter, half. I, I think in the winter time too, you might get all cozy in there. Winter time at night, nine and a half. I'd say I'll go nine. Nine? Did nine. you say? We'll go nine for that. All around, it's it's a place you have to go to. Here. I mean, you just you just do. Vivi's waving high. <laughs> Vivi's waving high to the tram. That was cute. <laughs> This is like the first hill test here. This is the city of seven hills, they say. Seems like there's more, but we need it after that lunch and all that food and beer. I love the design of the sidewalks here and the streets. It is very beautiful and I can imagine if it rains, very slippery. Very slippery if it rains, I bet. Especially if you're coming, like walking down the hill. Yeah. Okay, so we are at another kiosk. Spot here and we just went up our first big hill yeah how are you feeling oh, a lot of breath had a huge backpack oh. at least I didn't help. Vivi's okay she's just being carried around hey beautiful Verde, it's really a little bit of bubbles in it. A little bit of bubbles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pra não olhar mais two beers. A glass, and a glass of, wine, of wine and two, two waters. waters. <laughs> Come on, US, get it together. <laughs> So this is one of those buildings that was, you know, partially destroyed in the 1755 earthquake. But it's still here. Um, so very, very old building here. I'll put down below the details. We could probably go in there with our pass, but actually, you want to go in? Let's take a look. I really got a lot of stuff. All right, we're heading back. Unfortunately, we won't be visiting the Douro Valley wine region near Porto this trip, but these wine shops in Lisbon are really something. 
This one has verticals for sale of Quinto de Duval Nacional, perhaps the world's greatest port. We've been lucky to try it once or twice, but it's a little bit out of our price range. Going to get the Fanas. It's kind of a day we're doing all the staples here. The Fanas are a beef sandwich or a pork sandwich. Very famous here. This was right in the middle of the day and there was still more than a half hour wait to get these. My suggestion would be to go to this little gelato place right next door while you're waiting and grab a beer. And you can't just eat these sandwiches as they come. You gotta put on a little piri piri sauce and of course the mustard that they recommend as well. I'm not huge on mustard, but you gotta do it if you're here. All right, that was a long line. I told Ray just to go back with Vivi. And I'm gonna walk back. It's only five minutes from my hotel. Another reason why you should stay where we are, the Villa Baja. Couldn't recommend it enough. Solely on location, but very clean, very nice. Um, can't wait to try this. I wanna try it now. I don't know if I can wait five minutes. Okay, so what I did here is I got two. Boy, these look good. And I put the mustard and the piri piri on one and just the piri piri on the other. I'm not a huge mustard guy, so if I don't like it, I can go over that. This was only, I think, five euros and 40 cents. Yeah, 540 for both. So very inexpensive, and I think the quality is gonna be there and far exceed the price. That, um, that you pay for these. So we'll give it a try. All right, I decided we're gonna have a little glass of wine with the Bafanas. And of course it is Portuguese wine. I got it last night at Pingo Dos. So this was like 14 euros, I think. I wanted to get something that was a little more expensive actually. So it wouldn't be expensive at home. Definitely more on the expensive side here for the grocery store. Okay. Give us a bite, Rach. Of this? Yeah, What's this one? The, the mustard. Okay. Mmm, that's a good sandwich. Is it? Mm-hmm. Alright. Well, I'm gonna do just the Piri Piri. Oh, up, Brad. Is this just my hair? Well, Piri Piri. Yeah, my hair is spicy. Boy, that's really good. I don't think it does lunch anytime. That is spicy. Um, this sandwich for lunch mm -hmm. would be phenomenal if you're here. Now, this is three, four in the afternoon that we're doing this. If you're doing this at like Tolerable. noon, one o'clock, perfect little lunch. Inexpensive. I mean, it's like six US dollars for both of these. Oh, the wine's nice. You could tell the wine we had last night was like seven euros or something. It was great. This one has a lot more depth to it. Yeah, I mean, this is something something that you can keep in your cellar, but yeah, really good. Really nice compliment to the sandwich here. I'm gonna take a, actually, I'm gonna take a bite of the other one. Mm. Yeah, you can take some mustard now. Yeah, I put the mustard on it. I think the mustard is a, is a winner with the period, but you gotta do both. If they've set them both out there for a reason, do both. All in all, the Bifanas, I waited about 25, 30 minutes oh. probably in line, maybe longer. I think longer. I did end up talking to a couple behind me when Rachel and Vivi left to go to the grocery store. And he was from Munich and she was from Ukraine. That's part of the reason why I love traveling. They were probably a little bit younger than me, but had a great conversation and made the line the last 10 minutes go like two seconds. So talked about soccer and beer and everything else. and. It's one of the joys of traveling and meeting people like that. And he's never been in the United States. I was telling him about the United States. He's telling me more about Germany. Love it. I mean, that's why we do it. So while Vivi's sleeping, I'm gonna go explore a little bit of the city north of here that we haven't went. Okay, this is unexpected. There's some kind of festival going on. Let's go check it out.
Might have to get a sangria. It I is. hope it's good. It is really good. <laughs> I can promise. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. It's good. Four euros, not bad. Be sure to stop into the Church of St. Dominic. This beautiful and historic church dates back to the 13th century, but it has endured a lot of destruction over the years, such as the 1755 earthquake and even a fire in 1959. So this is where we're going to dinner tonight. I came to scout it out while Vivi's sleeping. It's called Bone Jardine. Famous for their Piri Piri chicken, which is something you have to get when you come here to Lisbon. But let me see if I need a reservation or not and make sure we're all square so that there's no surprises. So I talked to somebody there who worked there. He didn't speak any English, but the gist I got is that um, they don't take reservations, which is okay. And it's about a five to 10 minute wait if it's full. We can deal with that. All right, I'm excited. I am excited about that. Oh, check out this fountain. Vivi had awoken from her nap, and it was time to head out for the evening. Daddy, you say daddy? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we are going to Beaujardin. It's a really kind of a famous place here, I guess, for the chicken piri piri. One can't leave Portugal without a traditional Jinjinha experience. Lisbon has many of these small family-owned shops that serve the iconic cherry liqueur. They are popular spots for both tourists and locals. This one is one of the more famous ones in the city. It's gonna be her first Gingina shot. It's gonna be her first one. <laughs> yeah. Very, very young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never, never too early to start. Kind of cherry. You're both sweet and something bitter or sweet? Bitter. Not like the cherries you put in like an old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good though. One of, those, those. one of those things that's like but, put it to rest, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not my favorite, but I, I mean, I could have it. Like, I, do, I think after dinner, yeah, to help you digest. Oh, after dinner? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Get one after dinner. Bonjardim is most famous for their roasted chicken on the spit. The wine list looks good too, and we went with the most expensive white bottle they had at a whopping 17 euros. Perfecto. Obrigado. Great cheers. Beaujardin. We've been talking about coming here for a while. A while now. That's what we're really looking forward to. Yeah, this is one of the meals in Lisbon that we've really have thought about. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's a very popular spot. The chicken here is supposed to be out of this world. I cannot wait to try it. 
The best, the best one you got. Alright. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it definitely lived up to the hype. I mean, such an incredible flavor and the skin on it, my goodness. And you gotta put a little piri piri sauce on there as well. That's good chicken. Time. She's asked for more. More. Rach is like I'm trying to find scraps every day. Vivi had uh, more than enough chicken. Yeah. Vivi was the biggest fan of Beaujardin tonight. <laughs> so Beaujardin. Awesome. Ooh, really good place. Right, Vivi? Vivi She's a little tired. Vivi was the so Vivi fan. was the biggest fan. <laughs> Okay, food, I'm gonna go nine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Service? The first was very slow. First, it was very slow. But then we ordered our food literally a minute and a half. So we gotta go eight and a half, I think, with that. And then atmosphere, I mean, you're. You're in the streets of Lisbon here. I mean, come on, it's it's a nine. Yeah, I agree. It's it's Europe. There's gonna be a lot of nines on this trip with atmosphere. It's the way it is. But uh, there you go, a must go to for chicken. That skin on that chicken. Oh, was, that was amazing. That was the best part. It's unreal. <laughs> I mean, it was, the fries were really good. Too. Fries were good. It was, we had a lot of fries today. No fries tomorrow. No, no fries tomorrow. <laughs> Sardinia. Yeah. Is Isn't Sardinia sardines? Portuguese? Yeah. Oh. We have to buy some sardines. Well, we might as well go in, huh? Yeah, as well. Looks like Alright, that was a tourist trap. We're, we are going to buy canned sardines here to take home just to try on some Friday night with Portuguese <laughs> wine that we bring yeah. home to. But not the place. That's it's like a carnival. I don't trust it. Yeah, I'm sure it's coming. Cool. I know. It's, there was another place I saw running this morning though that I... Do you have mine? Yeah, I have another place in mind. And what's for dessert? Yeah. Getting pasta estinata. Yeah, <laughs> pasta estinata. For dessert. Um, we have... Got a you gotta run it back today. Yeah. You had to run it back. You know, they're the perfect breakfast and dessert, you know? We had it for breakfast. We're running it back for dessert. Oh, I got a a lot of crust in my hand. These ones feel Ooh. pretty warm. They're warm? Yeah. Ooh. Mmm, nice flaky. Very good? Mm-hmm. Vivi's over here watching uh, Portuguese Disney Channel. Disney Channel. That's what you hear in the background. Round two. Mm -hmm. Pasta Senada. So the Pasta Senada, the history goes back over 300 years ago. There's a monastery in Belém, and they had monks that needed to raise money for their monastery. And what they were doing at the time, it was the egg whites, I believe, that they were using for something that they did to so they wash had, their clothes. Use for the yolk. They had to have use for the oak, so they started to make these treats. Uh, and whenever the monastery finally shut down or whenever the thing ended, they ended up selling the recipe to Pastes de Belen. It was like three years after the fact that they sold it to them, started it, and they're blooming today, and they're still around. And then everything just spread around. It's, it is what it is today. It's the most famous food in, in Portugal, probably. 
When we were at the grocery store, they sell these mini beers, so we got one of each, Superbach and Sagres, to do a little taste comparison. One, two, three, Superbach. Super oh, <laughs> Superbach! The winner, Superbach. Well, good morning, starting off day two here in Lisbon. And we plan on heading to Sintra today. Cannot wait for that, it's gonna be epic. But before we leave for Sintra, I wanted to wake up early and get some exercise and climb up to one of Lisbon's most famous lookout spots. A lot of steps. A lot of steps. Okay, I've made it to Miradouro de Santa Luzia. This is a nice lookout point, allegedly. So, we're gonna go check this out. I don't know if I can get in the castle. I don't have my Lisbon card, but I'm sure there's some epic views here. The viewpoint here is set within a terrace garden adorned with colorful flowers, vines, and a pergola. From here, you can enjoy panoramic views of the Alfama District and Tagus River. The Portuguese tiles, or azulejos as they call them here, decorate the walls and depict important scenes of Lisbon's history. spot there. I highly recommend that. Now I'm gonna work my way back down the hill. Well, Bibby didn't nap and we are getting pizza takeout tonight. It wasn't the plan, but it's just what we're gonna have to do. You wouldn't last for your dinner, would you? Nope. nope. This place does have good reviews on Google. Bringing back two pizzas wasn't exactly what we had in mind for dinner tonight. But we also had some Iberico jamon to go with it as well. Okay, so this pizza isn't bad. Very thin. Cooked well on the bottom. Would I go out of my way to go get it? Probably not. That's fine. If you're in a pinch though and you're looking or you're just craving something else other than seafood and bacalao. I think it's better than a lot of times we can get at home though. <laughs> Oh yeah, certainly. If this, if this was at home, I would get it. Yeah. For sure. Okay, here's the wine. Um, I will say, is it the best wine I've ever had? No. And I didn't expect it to be at three euros. But, it drinks very nice, very easily. And it's dry. It's got some depth to it. At home, this is easily a 12 or $15 bottle of wine, easily. And I was just telling Rach, you could get a whole case for under $40 here. You approve of the, the pizza, Vivi? Ooh. Vivi having some pizza. First pizza in Portugal, okay. Yeah. Is that her first pizza? Mm -hmm. you, know, first, you have your first french fry and first pizza in Portugal? All them what we eat, the American kind of things we eat. That's Come funny. On. Just at that age though. She is literally falling, falling asleep. asleep at the table. Yes, she is. Rach once again had a sweet tooth after dinner. So I went out and found a place nearby that had a wide assortment of different flavors of, you guessed it, pastes donadas. These 
these assortment of donatas are pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have the strawberry, mango, the regular. There's the almond. We have apple. Am I forgetting one? Chocolate. Chocolate. I'm gonna try the chocolate one. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of unique. One. I never. A chocolate oh, yeah, donata. Chocolate, yeah. I'm just gonna taste like chocolate pudding. Yeah. Well, it's our last full day in Lisbon. Yeah. Not feeling the greatest today. A bit of dehydration, perhaps. Ow. Ow. Did not sleep well. Woke up sick. I don't know. <laughs> it is raining. It is slippery. I mean, it is really slippery. I tell you, it is no fun being sick right now. Last day in Lisbon. Probably not going to Belém because the way I feel. I just woke up with chills last night. I have a dry mouth. I have a stuffy nose. I even threw up this morning. I don't know what it is, if I'm dehydrated or what. Finally made it up the elevator. Well, we didn't go up the elevator. Shortcut. If you want to go up the famous elevator from the bottom, don't actually go up the elevator. Just go through H&M up to the third floor, exit, go across the street, come up some steps, and you are right there to walk and see the same exact views as if you would have waited an hour to ride the short elevator to the top. And it was right at this moment that I knew that I was really sick and in bad shape. I needed to get in the bed, and that's exactly what I did. Unfortunately, the filming in Lisbon ended right there. Waiting for our driver here. It's about a half hour late. Good thing we don't have a plane to catch. I don't know what's going on. It's hard to think we need a child seat. Yep. In the next episode, we take a train to the fairy tale town of Sintra. Be sure not to miss it. Until then, thanks for tuning in and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.